It's Thursday, the 4th of January, and more information is coming to light from the recent collision of the Japan Airlines A350 and the Japan Coast Guard Dash 8 aircraft at Tokyo's Haneda Airport on the 2nd of January. Here's the latest updates. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And yesterday, the Ministry of Japan Transportation released the full ATC audio transcript. If you find these updates useful, check your subscription status, your free subscription status to YouTube, and check your notifications to all so that you will get these notifications as they are released. Remember, these radio transmissions were pretty scratchy and hard to understand on live ATC. Now we've got the written transcript. We'll pick it up here at uh, 1743-12, Japan Airlines 516. That's our Airbus A350, the accident aircraft. And the Coast Guard aircraft is JA-722 Alpha. JAL-516, the stations that are reporting are the aircraft and the transmissions that they are conducting with Tokyo Tower. Not ground, but just the tower. Tokyo Tower, Japan Airlines 516, Tokyo Tower, good evening, runway 34 right, continue approach, and they give them the winds and they say we have departure. I'm not sure exactly what they mean when the tower says at Haneda, we have departure. I've not been flying out of Haneda in the last couple of years, and I do not recall what they mean by this. Anybody flying out of Haneda could uh, clarify that? JAL 516 reads it back correctly. JAL 516, continue approach runway 34 right. Now there's a Delta Airlines 276. Tokyo Tower Delta Airlines 276 with you on Charlie, that's taxiway Charlie, proceeding to holding point 34 right. Tokyo Tower, Delta 276, Tokyo Tower, good evening, taxi to holding point Charlie 1. That's the beginning of the runway for 34 right. Delta reads that back correctly. Holding point Charlie 1, Delta Airlines 276. Now Tokyo Tower says, Japan Airlines 516, runway 34 right, cleared to land, winds 310 at 8. So they did get the clearance to land. Japan Airlines reads back the clearance correctly, cleared to land, runway 34 right, Japan Airlines 516. They read back the entire runway, the clearance, and the call sign. Now here's the Coast Guard aircraft. Japan Airlines 722 Alpha, Tower, Japan Airlines 722 Alpha, Charlie. He's telling him that he's on taxiway Charlie and he's probably just come up from the ground frequency. Tokyo Tower says, Japan Airlines 722 Alpha, T Tokyo Tower, good evening, number one, taxi to holding point, Charlie five. And the Coast Guard aircraft reads back, taxi to holding point, Charlie 5, JA722 Alpha, number one, thank you. Now, a couple of things. When these aircraft, when we're all taxiing around at these busy airports, the captain is generally doing all the taxiing as he has the tiller on his side. He needs to concentrate on his taxiing, so it's normally the first officer that's making all of these radio calls. Also, the Coast Guard aircraft is doing an intersection departure on Charlie 5 to get ahead of all of the other aircraft that need to use the full length of the runway at Charlie 1. And because he's a smaller Dash 8 turboprop aircraft at Charlie 5, minus the uh, 1600 feet, he still has plenty of runway out ahead of him to conduct an intersection takeoff. And this will get him out of the way and uh, and off to his um, earthquake mission sooner than waiting in line in the queue back at Charlie 1. Following that, another aircraft, Japan Airlines 179, is cleared to taxi to holding point Charlie 1. That'll be the number three or the third aircraft waiting for takeoff. And we have a Japan Airlines 166 coming in to land 34 right behind Japan Airlines 516. Japan Airlines 166 will eventually be sent around following the collision. Now down here at the bottom of the transcript, the collision occurs right here about 1747-27 and all the language reverts from standard IKO English back to the local Japanese language. Now here's what that Coast Guard 
taxi clearance to hold at Charlie 5 sounded like on live ATC. While everybody on board the Airbus A350 survived, and we'll get into that evacuation in a minute, the only survivor on the Japan Coast Guard Dash 8 was the captain. And we're not sure if this is a picture of him limping away from the wreckage of the Dash 8. But according to the Japan Ministry of Transportation, upon interview after the crash, the captain of the Dash 8 was convinced that he was cleared for takeoff for runway 34 right. Expectation bias. One person does the radios, but the person flying the aircraft believes and hears something different. And there's another, well, two separate barriers that were missed in this accident sequence chain here. And one is we've got to get the cockpit voice recorder from the Dash 8, if it even has one, to see what kind of coordination was going on at the time in the cockpit between the first officer and the captain, particularly regarding this radio communication and this clearance. And two, when you taxi out onto the runway and make that left hand turn to blast off, you always check the opposite direction for landing traffic. Now at night with two parallel runways, you're gonna see aircraft lined up to come in to land. And a lot of those aircraft are gonna be lined up for the other runway. So you need to be able to discern if the lights that you are looking up at are actually lined up with your runway. And somehow that too was missed. Here, according to Simon Radecki's Aviation Herald, on January 3rd, the Japan Transportation Safety Board revealed that they've only so far recovered one of the data recorders out of the Japan Coast Guard aircraft, and none of the data recorders have been recovered from the Airbus A350. Remember, they're looking for two data recorders from each aircraft, one cockpit voice recorder and one data recorder. Now let's go on to the evacuation. On the media, they've been reporting that the evacuation occurred in less than 90 seconds, but that's not correct. I believe they're confusing that with the requirement, like we discussed on the first video, of transportation aircraft to be able to be evacuated in 90 seconds, all of the passengers using half of the slides. Here on uh, the Aviation Herald, it says that on January 3rd, the airline reported that the aircraft skidded about a thousand meters after the collision the last person got off the a350 at 1805 about 18 minutes after the collision and today japan airlines is reporting that actually 15 passengers needed medical attention there were three pilots in the cockpit that's very common for um international flying you've got a relief pilot in there and anytime you have relief pilots, they are all required to be in the cockpit for the takeoff and landing. There were three pilots in the cockpit. None of them were able to see the Dash 8 aircraft and therefore no go around was ever even considered. Just as I suspected, they never saw this aircraft because it's so very hard to see another aircraft at night, especially when that aircraft is lined up on the runway and looking at the daytime photographs of the wreckage it looks like the dhc8 or the dash 8 was lined up on the center line of the runway and the japan airlines aircraft touched down just before the dash 8 and mowed right over the top of them so the air crew never saw the dash 8 and never considered doing a go around complete and total shock and surprise after the aircraft came to a stop, the cockpit crew was not aware of any fire. The fire is going on way behind them. Remember, from the cockpit of, of an airplane, you cannot see even your wingtips. You cannot see much behind you at all. Now, the A350, I believe, does have cameras on board, but in all the chaos and the short amount of time they had to work with, I'm not sure if they got to those cameras. So the crew was not aware of any fire. However, flight attendants reported fire from the aircraft. The purser, that's like the number one flight attendant, went to the cockpit and reported the fire and received instructions to evacuate. Evacuation thus began with the front two exits, as we saw in the videos, left and right, closest to the cockpit, L1 and R1, 
of the other six emergency exits, remember there's a total of eight on the A350, five of those exits were already on fire. Not the exit itself, but there was fire right outside the exit. That's why it's so important that you have your windows up on landing so that you can see what's going on outside the aircraft. Only the left aft exit was still usable. The intercom malfunctioned. Communication from the aft aircraft with the cockpit was thus impossible. As a result, the aft flight attendants gave up on receiving instructions that would be considered a, a commanded evacuation from the cockpit and opened the emergency exit on their own initiative. Now, what's not mentioned in here is, was the evacuation horn sounded on the aircraft? You can do the evacuation PA and you usually follow that up with a horn as well. And here's a couple of pictures of the A350 after the fire and experts are combing over the wreckage of this as this is one of the first hull losses of an A350 and of a mostly carbon fiber aircraft for the first time in aviation history. And they're finding that the carbon fiber structure actually performed better than aluminum structure, burning slower and allowing the people more time to safely evacuate the aircraft. Another possible contributing factor to the accident down here in the long list of notams for the airport, stop bar light for Charlie 1 through Charlie 14, unserviceable. The stop bar red bar lights that will help pilots back up their radio calls to tell them to not proceed forward were inoperative. Regarding the TCAS or traffic collision alerting system on board these airliners, these systems are designed to work in the air. They are basically disabled when they get real close to the ground. All resolution advisories are inhibited once the aircraft is within 1,000 feet of the ground. Here in the States, and I don't know what they have available at the time at the Haneda airport at the time of this accident, but here in the States, in order to fill this gap, in detection, we have advanced airport surface detection equipment that will alert controllers when there is a possible collision on the ground between two aircraft. This is why you got to leave your transponder on, on and on altitude or TA mode when you're on the ground. And these ground-based systems are available at these major 35 major airports here in the United States. And it will alert the air traffic control operators if there is a potential collision about to happen on the ground at the airport. This is particularly useful in low visibility conditions. As new details in this accident continue to emerge, we can begin to see how the holes in the Swiss cheese model of accident investigation lined up and how barriers that are normally in place to prevent these holes from lining up were breached or missed altogether. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. As we get new updates, we'll have them posted here. See you here.